Hi, welcome to Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. And if you do like this channel, please subscribe or like. It really helps the channel go along. Obviously, it helps me get a little bit of income. It is very little, I must admit. And it helps me buy other stuff to bring to the channel to review. Some stuff you may have not seen before. Some stuff you've got on your list, maybe, that you want to know how it sounds that there's not many reviews about. I try and stick to things that there's not many reviews about, really, if I can, because otherwise it's just flooded and not many people are going to see me. And you're going to have a general idea of how that item sounds anyway. So uh, I try and stick to something you know, that ain't got a lot of reviews on, but it don't always work. Some things come up cheap, and I think, oh, well, I'm good at it. It's cheap. I can do my own review on it, see what I reckon it sounds like. And today, this is more of a curiosity, really. Uh, when I go on eBay, I put in the search bar, vintage speakers, all that kind of stuff. Being a bit of a vintage channel, uh, a budget channel, you know, getting stuff for next to nothing, etc. Uh, well, cheap as possible, I'll say next to nothing. It's cheap as possible. Um, I'd say sub £200 kind of barrier, I call it budget. Um, so, yeah, curiosity, vintage speakers. And these come up on eBay for £160. And, of course, it's kind of like top-end budget, if you know what I mean, for my channel. They didn't look nothing special. So I wasn't really that interested. I thought, oh, you know, the bloke said like they're kind of like a vintage kind of sound, that kind of vintage sound stage, etc. that kind of vintage sound. You know, obviously people collecting vintage stuff would be interested in that. But £160, I weren't going to take the gamble. There's no information about them at all on the internet anywhere. These speakers are made by Lee Electronics. When I say made by Lee Electronics, this is here in the UK and it's where road probably in about the 1960s, somewhere around there. I'm guessing a little bit, maybe some viewers can help me out exactly when they were made. But it's got Lee Electronics written on the back. So if we just quickly take a look at the back of it there, you can see Lee Electronics 400 Edgeware Road. Now, I've been trying to find out a bit of information. I can't really find anything really, to be honest with you, apart from a couple of adverts. And this is the advert that goes back to Furbis, the 1976. And they had an advert in like a, a transmitter magazine, a receiver transmitter ham kind of magazine that kind of thing amateur radio and as you can see they sell amateur radio kind of stuff back then so maybe they started selling these speakers low end i fi at the time it weren't working for them and they moved on to transmitters and receivers and kind of carried along that line and i think the latest advert i see was about the 1990s they were still going so i'm not too sure exactly when they packed up but this i think is probably a goodman speaker to be honest with you i'm guessing a little bit maybe people can help me out and show a few pictures inside etc but this is probably a Goodman speaker, uh, maybe like one of these OEM speakers, maybe something like that, uh, that they dished out and maybe like Lee Electronics stuck their name at the back uh, just so they sold it under their name or something. I, I don't really know, I'm guessing a lot. Anyway, like I say, I'll see these on eBay for 160 at that price. It wasn't for me, it was you know no information, I weren't going to take a gamble at that price. But uh, then a lot, and I'll, I'll flick through cash converters here in the UK, uh, kind of like a shop where you take second hand stuff and they give you money for it, etc. You can kind of train in if you want to, all that kind of. But they do a variety of everything and anything, really. Uh, but they do have a website where they sell some stuff as well. I bought some stuff off there before. I bought a couple of pairs of speakers before. I had a bit of a nightmare with one pair, which was a 10 eye pair, which come completely undone, basically. Like, someone had took them apart and give them back to cash inverters, then sold them on to me. But, you know, they give me money back and everything, so I can't knock them for that. All the postage was paid and everything, so it was really good. In that front so i can't knock them for that anyway in cash converters on their website they had these up for just 149.99 so that was 10 pound cheaper than ebay so i was getting tempted but not tempted enough uh, so yeah i want to just show you a few tickets here i'll put them all up on the screen as well afterwards so you can see them but they had them up for 149.99 but then they changed that to 99 pound 99 pence so i thought this is getting a bit more tempting but obviously like i let it go past a little bit weren't well, really tempted at £99, of course I wasn't, you know what I mean, for something I've never heard of, something I've never seen before, it's quite a gamble to pay. But anyway, the next ticket was £29.99. Now, for £29.99, they could charge £6 postage, one good thing about cash converters, they don't really go over with a postage, it's quite fair to be honest with you. Some stuff's just £3.99, like, you know what I mean, and, uh, I think a pair of speakers bought for them was only £3.99 postage, so bottom end postage here in the UK. So for £29.99, and it was £6 postage, £35.99, gets me these speakers. So I can have it, I mean, you can see they're quite marked up in there, but I'm not really that bothered. Um, you can actually, like, get some, like, these filler pens, etc. And, and I've, I've done a couple of speakers, and it works out quite well with them. It doesn't work out too bad, but I'm not going to go into that now. Um, so for £29.99, Curiosity, like, I thought I've got to get them. So I'll see what they're about, really, see what's inside, see what they are etc because i knew nothing about them at the time so anyway let's have a look i've stuck it on the floor or table or wherever i did on the table so there you can see there it is on the table so i'll take the cover off 
if we just come to the cover actually it's quite a well made cover really like this is kind of in line with the Ditton kind of cover the Celestial Ditton kind of cover the way it's made kind of like a, a clothy kind of material uh, coming straight down and you know it's all fairly well you know stapled and tapes and everything uh, glued should I say to the frame so it's quite well made really you know for what it is so that's the cover so uh, as you see the speakers on the baffle there and uh, there's the bass speaker uh, as you can see there, the bass speaker here, actually the recess of the bass speaker just comes here. This recess of the bass speaker here is probably about half an inch inwards there, the cut. Yet on the uh, two little tweeters here, uh, this is about a quarter of an inch. So it's kind of got a bit more recess the bass than the two tweeters. Okay, so we flick it over. There you can see the uh, tweeters are recessed there. They've, they've gone to the, the uh, trouble, shall we say, of cutting it out rather than just sticking the tweeters straight, you know, straight on the baffle kind of thing on that board. They kind of recess that out a little bit, so obviously it takes a bit of time, etc. That's with the driver out. So if we have a look at this driver now, the front of the driver, as you can see, it's a twin paper cone driver. It's six and a half inches uh, is the size of it. And there's the driver back now. So now I don't really know a lot about it. It's the markings on here. Maybe people can help me out with the markings on this uh, on this driver as well as the tweeter driver may help me out. So there you can see the drivers. Now talking about the tweeter, there's the tweeter. As you can see, that measures three and a half inches and there's some markings on the tweeter there as well. Some um, may know something about the tweeter with the markings, but their markings kind of go with the kind of markings that uh, Goodman's do on their speakers. The numbers ain't the same, but it's the kind of same type of typeface, same kind of markings, but the Goodman's seem to put their own stickers on the back or some other markings on the, on the uh, speakers themselves. Like I say, this may be quite kind of an OEM, a uh, cheaper version of the speaker they do themselves, that kind of thing, I think. There's the cabinet. The cabinets are quite good quality, really. Um, as you can see, they're milled out and everything there. And there's the crossover inside, and there's just a, a clo more closer up of the crossover. Uh, just one capacitor and uh, one inductor coil there on that. Now, what these are, I've got no way of knowing. I've got no way of knowing the sensitivity of these speakers. But going by other speakers, how they're there and where the amp position is on the volume, etc. Uh, these are about 86, 87 dB sensibility, uh, sensitivity should I say, somewhere around there. If we just do, I think do a measurement actually, I've got the tape measure out and forgot to measure them. So I just want to kind of give you an idea how big these are. You can probably see how they are next to me, but these are, uh, where we go, they're 14 inches by nine and the depth is eight and a half. So it kind of gives you an idea of these little bookshelf speakers, how big they are. So okay, I want to get on now to actually how they sounded. Right, where do these sit? Are these a 149.99 speaker or a £29.99 speaker? This is the question I ask myself when I'm on the way, get quite excited. You know, you've got something new coming in you're going to review. Don't really know a lot about, you know, how reds that to the excitement. So I couldn't wait to get these up and running kind of thing, plugged in, making sure they work first of all, because now and again, you're going to get a speaker where the bloke says, oh, it's all working fine, or the shop says it's fine, and one of the tweeters don't work or something like that. So of course, it's not going to give you the sound it should do, and you've got a load of aggro sending it back or trying to get a replacement tweet or, or whatever. Okay, so I used three amplifiers on this. I used um, my Sansui 101, a Sansui 331 receiver, and a Marantz 2216, I think, B receiver. It didn't really matter, I don't think, what I used on these, to be honest with you. For what I got, I got out of them. I kind of knew straight away how they sounded, but obviously you go through a few other amplifiers, etc., trying to be made. Maybe that make them sound a little bit better or a little more whatever, a bit worse, depending which one, uh, what suits them maybe. Um, so how did these sound? Well, first of all, I go by the sound stage. The sound stage was always in between the two speakers, never went past the two speakers. It wasn't really a focused sound stage. You know, it was a bit, yeah, it wasn't focused. The sound stage wasn't solid kind of thing. It was okay, you know what I mean? It was okay. There was no depth to it at all, the sound stage, no real depth to it, none, none at all really. Um, yeah, so it wasn't that exciting. It was okay, you know what I mean? It was okay. Uh, not a lot of bass on these. And what bass there was on these wasn't really that defined. You know, it wasn't really that defined at all. It was okay, but you weren't really getting any excitement out of anything like that. It was okay. That was about it. Uh, Mid-range of vocals were okay. They was all right until you started cranking the volume up. I think on like the Sansui, the, the 101, 15 watt amplifier. As soon as you moved that beyond four, they kind of lost it, like, you know what I mean? They started, you know, the higher you went, they kind of lost it, you know, to, to the stage you, you want to bring it straight back down and keep it at three or four tops kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, the vocals were okay, but um, they did lose it the higher we went, you know, they just, just couldn't handle it, just just fell apart, really, to be honest with you. Um, eyes were okay, they was okay. 
you can you know you've got the bait and everything you got but there wasn't defined you just get to, you just get the noise you, you know it could be anything kind of thing that they're written no definition to it at all really it was okay you know what i mean but uh, no, nothing special again so yeah a bit disappointing there um yeah and they see I mean, i've really summed it up then i really said a lot about them but i think you've got an idea that these weren't a great speak you know weren't that fantastic they're all right on lower volumes they seem to hold their own and um, give give us a reasonable kind of sound out as soon as you start cranking up probably three or four you, you, you you're going to start getting into trouble and they, they kind of lost their way and lost lost control and everything you know, you know what i mean it, it was like getting unpleasant so to speak so not a great speaker at all um i did have a word with dit and works now i want to put a link downstairs or down below in the comments or in this video somewhere you'll see a link to his channel anyway he knows all about speakers you know he, especially celestial dittons all that kind of stuff he's been dealing in speakers and repairing speakers and making speakers for years and years and years i don't want to make him sound too old but he's been doing it quite a while so definitely go and check that channel out because it's definitely worth it i did i did ring him up as happens when he actually rang me up he was just sorting something out i did mention i got these obviously weren't too excited about it that's for certain but uh, we did say that the, maybe these being like in the 60s and that these are maybe a bit more suited to like a valve amplifier something like that they make it a little bit more out of them they sounded a bit more refined etc maybe attached to a valve amplifier may sit more at home with them rather than the transistor one so that could be the case but um yeah at the moment i think i spent 29.99 and uh, i think i maybe have spent 29.99 too much to be honest with you the six pound postage probably would have covered what these are worth at the moment so um yeah they're all right like i say just be a bit careful i think like i say these are goodman's goodman's oemm and just a basic kind of speaker they made even though this you know this camera is quite well made and they've gone to the trouble of cutting a few things out and uh, you know kind of doing other bits and pieces and the, the grill's quite nice etc so they've gone to the trouble of doing all that but at the end of the day this would have been a bottom of the range speaker back then i would have thought probably a speaker you can kind of associate if we kind of brought this into the 80s or something like that that you'd get a stack system you're buying by a stack system for about 500 four or five hundred quid and they're the kind of speaker that that comes with that it's probably Going to be a little bit better than this one to be honest you've got a 500 pound stack system it's probably going to be a little bit better than this but if you went out and bought one of them long kind of systems years ago this may be on par with it it may be it may be kind of like just a tad better depending on how cheap that one was so this was probably aimed at something like that at the time maybe just as a the next step up and it won't be a major step but it'd be the next step up but then that could like i say could have all changed a little bit could have been a few more steps up matched up with a valve amplifier or something like that it just sounded that bit nicer so that's it really so yeah these speakers are a disappointment really um and that's it so uh, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed the video until the next one i'll say thanks for watching and i'll see you all soon